This is a 1993 Daihatsu Rugger. It's extremely low miles. Uh, it is also a body on frame, turbo diesel, five speed manual, compact SUV. As you can see, it's two door and does have back seats. Um, and when I say low miles, I mean extremely low and get into the specifics of that when we get inside. But this was manufactured in August of 1993, so it's actually quite recent that it's able to be imported to the United States. I've had this since November, and I've been daily driving it since December. And I uh, just want to go over it because chances are most people in the United States have never seen one of these, let alone know what it is. If you're in the UK, though, you recognize this as a four track. If you're in Australia, I believe it's called the Rocky. If you're in Indonesia, it'll be the Taft. Um, and then, of course, Japan, it was called the Rugger. It was the only market it was called the Rugger. And I'm biased, but I think that's the best name for it. Anyway, this specific one was a one owner car. Um, I've got all of the original owner's manuals and paperwork. I've got all three original Daihatsu rubber topped keys. It itself is all original. Um, with the exception of these front fog lights, those have been added aftermarket. And as far as the trim level of this, I believe there was four levels and I believe this is just the one up from base model. It does have air conditioning. Um, but it's manual windows, manual locks, although you do have a power locking rear tailgate here. As I said, it is a compact SUV and it being a 2.8 liter gives it a larger displacement than say the common Hilux uh, 2.4 turbo diesel engine. Not terrible, not terribly a lot, um, but it is larger. And so you get a bit more power, a bit more torque, and since this is smaller than a Hilux or Hilux Surf, um, or a Land Cruiser Prado for that matter, it's actually quite peppy. And uh, it feels athletic, I guess, when you're driving it. But yeah, uh, let's go over the condition issues. So, major ones, right here, you have these two dents. Top one is just a dent. Bottom one does have paint loss. And can rotate around, see if it catches the sun. But as you can see, the paint itself, which is original, it has not been repainted, and uh, you can probably see why. But it's a light metallic, somewhere between gray and slate. There's no blue in it, though. It's just silver, I guess, a dark silver. Um, other major, I guess, condition issues is if you can see these hairline scratches, you cannot feel them, but they're everywhere. And if you look with how completely they cover the truck, my guess is that they took this to a brushed car wash often. And this is what happens when you do that because there's all sorts of dirt and crud and stuff that gets in those brushes and they just sit there and they whip on your paint. Uh, unfortunately, really no amount of polish or compounds or anything are gonna take this off. You actually have to get down to um, sandpaper to get those out. It looks beautiful otherwise, because there's all the paints there. And like I said, you cannot feel this, but you can see them. And the way the sun is angled on it right now, you can really see it. Hmm. But otherwise, out in direct sunlight, you can't see this. Uh, so we got the dents, the glazed, micro scratches down here the this bumper is a painted bumper and then there's a chassis support underneath it but this is dented here and uh no paint loss but obvious dent and then right here um no rust but paint loss that they tried covering up with Touch up paint that doesn't quite match, so. And you, of course, can't feel this. But not dented, it's just, they, something happened to where they lost paint on this edge here, so. Um, and then there's the scratches over here, too. Uh, the stickers, which are original, I don't know if you can see, along the bottom here, 
they're starting to separate from the body, you could have them recreated or come up with your own design. But the stickers here have a light gold flake in it. It's super subtle along with this secondary, I guess, darker gray. You can see. It says the Hatsu four-wheel drive rugger. And the amount of stickers that are on the side, so you have the one here, this, which goes all the way here, is one. That's one. And then Daihatsu, four, wheel, and drive. These are all separate. So this is not connected. These are all separate little stickers. And then Rugger is one piece. Handles, plastic, um, bumper corners. Everything is extremely good shape. Um, there's... This cleaned up mostly, but they got something on the paint. So this could probably be ground off too, but shows well otherwise. And it is dirty right now. Like I said, I have been daily driving it and it's starting to be pollen season for all of our live oaks. So within minutes, there's a fine mist of yellow covering everything. And then you take a white rag or your hand and then you can see it. Uh, this grill. It's all original, it's just a plastic piece that sticks out of the metal frame, or frame, metal body. Um, never been damaged or anything, and then the front bumper, of course, is clean. But there is paint fade, so this would have to be repainted. You can't bring that back because the paint's actually missing uh, in order to make it perfect. I think it shows pretty well by itself. And this grill is a part of it, so you cannot separate this center section from this. So you'd have to tape it off. That has your symbol. Um, and then as far as modifications, again, these fog lights, you could get these with factory fog lights, but these are aftermarket added because the knob on the inside doesn't match the rest of the interior. It doesn't stand out. It's just, if you look, you go, yeah, this wasn't here originally. And there's a bumper stick. And if you're curious what this is for, it's so when you're sitting in the driver's seat, which is on the right-hand side of a Japanese vehicle, this little stick tells you where the corner of your bumper is because you can't see it easily. So that's just to make sure that you're not clipping anything because you can look at the little stick and go, oh. So I actually like these little details like that. Other JDM details are this mirror. And it's a whole purpose is when you're parallel parking in Japan or the UK or some other place where you drive on the left, but sit on the right. All this does is show you the side of your vehicle so you can parallel park easy. Here in the United States, though, you can just stick your head out the window and look down and go, well, and park just fine. So this is more of like a novelty sort of detail thing, and it doesn't actually serve a purpose. Uh, and these are a dealer option. So these are just official rugger visor things. They're pretty helpful. Um, I think the primary purpose of those is you can smoke, but crack your window, and it can run or rain, and you won't get any water. I think that's the point. If you notice this, this is fiberglass, this topper section here, um, although it's painted in the same paint, so it doesn't stand out as far as colors go. It is removable, but it's removable in the same way that late model Broncos, the top, the rear could technically be removed. It's not really meant to, and you have to pull trim off, and then you have to do something with the rear door because it goes all the way up, and then you have this window thing sticking there, so is removable, but it'd be more of a seasonal thing that you do once. Drive it without the top on it and then all of the inconveniences that it has, and then later put it back on and then be done with it till next year. Um, being this is a 93, it does have a center, remounted center light. It's not common, I guess, in the early 90s or 80s for that matter for, the United, or for Japan. Do have a rear wiper. Uh, back here, this is an SE model, Rugger SE, and this is the same sort of gold flake that's in these mountain stickers. The Hatsu light emblem that just sticks out. The handle's right here, though, of course. And then, I'm sorry about that plane noise. Probably my most favorite part of the exterior details of this Rugger is the spare tire cover, which is original. So as you can see, you have this, and this is slightly metallic, just like the stickers. We have this hawk, who looks hawkish. Uh, this abstract sort of 
square that goes around, white circle. And then, and I quote, it says, four-wheel drive, intercooler, diesel turbo rugger for outdoor freaks, Daihatsu. And it's awesome. Cover's in good shape. Um, there's a puncture here and a puncture here. This one's difficult to see. You can see this one. But as far as the rest of the condition, some light fading, like I said, it's dirty. But other than that, it's excellent. Underneath there, the spare tire, or the spare wheel has the same factory wheels as this, which are just stamped painted silver metal bits. And that's another condition issue too. So you can see paint loss. And I believe it's original and I don't think he's ever been repainted, but you could repaint them easily enough. You even have the center wheel caps and uh, at auction, if I see these on anything, it doesn't have to be a rugger and like Toyotas and things, that's usually a pretty good indicator that the vehicle itself is one owner because these always go missing. If you look at Land Cruisers, especially with the original wheels, their little center caps almost always be missing unless it's a one owner car and they've kept it. And then of course you verify it afterwards, but this is verified. Um, that's just the detail I saw when I first saw this at auction and I was like, oh, I bet it's one owner. And then of course the mileage is absurdly low, which we'll get into. Uh, yeah, so this specific rugger is an F78. So if you're familiar with four tracks or tafts or ruggers, usually they're F75s. F70s, it's chassis code, like people talk about BMWs and Jeeps and things. But this is F78, and this one is number 000041. So it's the 41st one to roll off of the assembly line in August of 1993. Uh, you do have a pop-up sunroof up here. And we'll get into the inside later. Oops. So you get this little pop-up, which is nice to just kind of have around the whole time. Uh, and then you can pop this and then lift it up and then simply lift the whole panel out and then you have a full cutout. But then you have to put the panel somewhere. Um, what else? Well, there's no rust, no corrosion. The underside is pristine. As you can see the wheel wells, nothing, the plastic. Um, it's very, very clean. And besides the previous owner taking it to a brushed car wash, I do believe they stored this in a garage as there's zero sun damage. Um, since I've had it, I've changed the oil and replaced the tires. These are slightly oversized, just slightly. Like we're talking like one to 2% overstock, uh, but they're BF Goodrich KO2s, white letters out, of course, mounted on the original wheels. Drives great. Um, can do highway speeds, 75 is about your highest top speed that you're actually gonna get. You can go higher than that, but then you start approaching red line because it's a diesel, so it's not like it's a high revving engine. But you can comfortably float down the highway and it's actually quite comfortable. It does have independent front suspension, so it's not solid axle. Previous ruggers would have been solid axle. Uh, older ones, even four corner leaf springs, this is coil sprung. Uh, yeah, all right, so let's go inside. You can see all the glass and everything is good. Driver's side door card, flawless, uh, not even fading on the handles or the window windups. A lot of times you'll get stuff from Japan that's in good shape, but this will be faded. Likewise with this top, just because it's where the sun is. Manual windows, instructions telling you how to do four wheel drive, how to change the seating. Um, I don't know what that is, but who knows. As you can see, driver's seat, almost perfect. The surfaces here in the foam, all of that is perfect, but the one flaw is right here. You have this slight separation of the vinyl off of the fabric backing for this. And the only reason for that is, this is where your hand goes to lift this up. Um, Original floor mats, Daihatsu, rubber ones. Original pedals, this one, I gotta tuck this back in. If you're familiar with how these are, <laughs> these are just rubber covers that fit over the metal, so I gotta fix that. And this is the wiring for the factory, or wiring for the fog lights, which they added. But yeah, seat's perfect, um, fairly comfortable, not harsh or uncomfortable in any way. 
and the mirrors are in perfect shape too which is sometimes rare but yeah take these sunglasses off don't need them in here original wheel perfect um and then as far as the mileage this one has 23,066 total kilometers on it um i got it with about 20,000 kilometers on it so i've been adding I'm up to about 3,000 kilometers, and it's been great. I drive it around town, down the highway. Uh, I've driven it up north two hours and back. I've driven it up to Tampa, which is about an hour away. It's, it's, it's a new car, essentially. It's a brand new car from 1993, albeit a body on frame diesel SUV. For the instrument panel, uh, RPM gauge over here with a 4200 red line, and like I said, uh, at Top Gear on the highway, about 3,000, 3,100 RPM is your 70 to 75 mile per hour speed. You can go faster than that, except you start approaching red line, and I'd rather not rev this just nonstop all the time. Fuel gauge, um, did the calculations. It's about 22 miles to the gallon, mixed city, mostly city. Um, kind of like 40, 50 mile per hour is as fast as I'd usually go on streets. I don't commute, or I do not commute anywhere in this, so I think that's pretty good, but I guess it's par for the course of diesel. Temperature gauge, speedometer, it's in kilometers of course, odometer, and trip meter, also in kilometers. And then you have warning lights down here. Uh, oil, battery, emergency brake, if your brights are on, glow plugs, if you're in four wheel, and then if you have to drain the water out of the fuel filter. Beep. Horn works. Turn signal stock with your headlights, being that we're in a right-hand drive vehicle, it's over here instead of on your left. Uh, windshield wiper, no problem, and then right here, if you can see. <laughs> so this gives you an indication of what they did. So they added this switch. You can see this is homebrew, I guess, for the fog lights. But you just click it in there. Anyway, this is how you would turn them on. So at minimum, you have to at least have the running lights on, and then you pop this out, and then the fog lights are on. Um, and then up here, it's push button, four wheel drive high. So you push this. You have to get out and manually switch the wheel hubs though and then you'll be in four wheel high. Rear window defroster, which does work. Hazards, which of course work. Rear wiper, rear mister, which automatically fires off the wiper. Voltmeter, uh, inclinometer, so it tells you your angle of approach and everything, and a working analog clock. This does also have working air conditioning, which is very nice. Uh, this is your standard uh, HVAC controls, I guess. So then this is your AC knob, you just twist that over, and then if it's on cold, you turn it on, compressor kicks on. Of course, you'd want it in here. Uh, the other part about this, too, is, and the manuals show it, heat only works in the foot and the defrost settings. So you cannot get heat out of these front vents. You do get heat out here, and you do get heat from the feet, but not over here. Uh, it's common in Jimneys as well, so I guess that's just something with the ducting they did, so it doesn't really bother me, but might you. Was it on smoker's vehicle? See the ashtray? Quite clean. The cigarette lighter shows it very little use, and the outlet does work too, of course. And the original factory stereo, and so it's a double din system, so you have your radio up here, and then you have your tape player down here. But the most important part of this, of course, it looks good. But down here, there's a graphic equalizer. So all of these little columns bounce up with yellow LEDs until it gets up into the red and then it clips. So I wanted to keep that. The tape player does not work uh, mechanically. There's something wrong with it to where you try to put a tape in and just nothing happens. It doesn't accept it or anything. So I installed a line bypass, which means, because if you're familiar with Japanese stereos, they run on a different FM band. So at most, I can get two FM stations. One's a classic music station, which comes in beautifully. And then another one is some staticky uh, talk radio station that I can sometimes get depending on where I'm at in town. But 
pointless. So uh, there's this little box you can buy. It's called a bypass, and essentially it connects to the antenna. And since you can't use FM anyway, simply plug that in, and then what happens is, I have a phone without a stereo jack, so I gotta use this stupid little dongle. But you get a auxiliary input, which is really nice. You can plug whatever you want in. I, of course, use my phone like everybody probably would, and use streaming services. But because of that, you get no interference because it's not over the air, it's directly over the FM line, piped in with wires, but then this works. So I can get all the cool original details that I would with playing music, but I can listen to modern music through my phone or any other device that I want. And it's very nice. Um, and because of this, this was the first time I tried this, I'm probably gonna do that on every car that I import that has a factory stereo that I wanna keep. And it doesn't require any modification. Uh, all I'm tapping into is a power line but you can undo this and go back to complete stock if you wanted without any sort of problem. So that's really awesome. This is a five speed manual, typical one, two, three, four, five, and then reverse is down. Down here is four wheel low. So if you're in too high and you press this button, you'll get a four wheel high. And then four low, it's four low and you get a bunch more torque at the wheels. See the dashboard, a little dirty, so sorry about that. Uh, but it's clean, not warped, not cracked. All the devices work. Um, and then down here, this is your power lock tailgate. So you don't get power locks in here. Everything is manual. But back here, you can lock and unlock the tailgate. Or rear door, I guess, because it's not really a gate. But yeah, it's just really nice. Um, anything else? Well, headliner's good. Sun visors are good. This light works. Trim is good. And it's just really nice. And then this is the pop-up sunroof. Go to the passenger side. Likewise over here, door card perfect, glass perfect, mirrors perfect. Um, this seat is perfect, it does not have that crack that the driver's side does. Original mats again, I am missing the flare, so sorry about that. As far as the room goes, plenty comfortable. Um, no space issues or like tall people need not apply, none of that sort of stuff. Um, although extremely tall people probably wouldn't be very comfortable in here, but sorry, they're probably not very comfortable in most situations. Um, and I also did uh, replace the wipers and needed it. So you have your oh shit bar here, oh shit handle here, your wind up windows, vents, Really nothing. Glove box, which does contain the original case. But then the original owner's manual, some maintenance history, the original maintenance book. Let's go in here. And then this is a, I guess, extended pamphlet. And all it does is talks about air conditioning. The air conditioning does work coming out of the face vents, so no problem with that. It's just the heat that doesn't. And then if you've ever seen Japanese manuals, uh, from this era anyway, they're red. So this one, Rugger Owner's Manual. It's actually in very good shape. But my favorite part about this, I mean, it does give a lot of information and it tells you the oil capacity, but it's their little male model guy. So he's this guy right here. See? Telling you how to use it, how to be aware. He's got a wife, he's got kids too. There they are. But this, this just cracks me up. <laughs> you have this guy, and this is used to, he's indicating that everything is okay and you're good to drive because the manuals are always full of that. But I just love this dude pointing at the back of the rugger and just saying okay with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> so this is really good. Um, I'm gonna scan this because I'll probably never see another one of these. So, 
and most people probably never would see it either and so I'd like to provide that for people. Glove box is a good size. But yeah, that's that. And then if you want to get in the back, it's actually not that big of a deal. Flip this, and you go. Back here, it's one solid bench seat, technically seating for three. You do have a center seat belt, it's lap only. Both the left and right, though, do have shoulder belts. As you can see, there's a roll bar back here with the seat belts mounted on it. Original Daihatsu single piece floor mat that goes straight across in excellent shape. Seat itself in absolutely excellent shape. And we'll put this all the way back. So, yeah. It's all right back here. I mean, I'm 5'10", so this is fine. Uh, it'd probably be a little uncomfortable for a longer trip, but not nearly as bad as you'd think. And because you get this little pop-up bit, um, and then in here you can see how difficult it would be to have this rear top off, because you'd have to take this trim off, this trim off. It just wouldn't be the most pleasant. But you could do it. But yeah, as far as comfort goes, it's pretty good. Um, and like I said, you get your shoulder belts and everything. See the panel back here? Perfect shape. All plastic. Clean. Another handle for the passenger. Likewise here. And you can get in and out from the driver's side. It's just not as convenient. And then you have to readjust your seat every time you do it. So I just make everybody get in over here. Do you have a rear ashtray? Again. Unused. Little cubby. Seemingly unused. Uh, it doesn't ever seem like anybody sat back here. Although, with the absurdly low mileage, I don't think anybody actually drove this, so... Yeah, and the seat does... The rear seat is able to be folded flat, and then it is also able to be folded forward. And you notice this little hook. It's right here. That is, so when it's folded forward, you hook it underneath the seat, so it doesn't want to come back under acceleration. So yeah, you could seat four comfortable adults in here, or five idiot kids if you want to hate the kid you sit in the center anyway you want to get out if you're in the back seat and there's no passenger to open the door or anything for you get a little foot switch back here and then you can reach up and then there you go and uh, i just noticed so it does come with the original bottle jack kind of difficult to see Woo. and it does come with the original toolkit um the bag isn't branded at all, neither is the, I guess, tire iron. Actually, this one says Toyota. Fitting, I guess, Toyota owns Daihatsu. And I don't know if this is all the tools you would get. It might be. I have no idea what this is. Somebody out there probably does. Daihatsu branded 10 and 12 millimeter wrench. A little, huh, little set of pliers, I guess. And then this which you use to pull the center caps off, as you cannot access the lug nuts without taking it off. And then a screwdriver, which is reversible. <laughs> Between flat and Phillips. And that just rests in this tray right here. That's the whole point of that. And like I said, I don't believe it's complete, but I also don't know what a complete one looks like. But it doesn't have any details that identify it as that have to anyway. Um, and then the other part about this bottle jack is you need one of those long sticks to attach to it and then spin it. Normally it goes under the hood. Uh, it is missing, so I do not have that. And then I'll pop the hood later too. Anyway, rear. This opens up in one big door. See back here, ultra excellent shape. A little mark on the handle back here. I never actually use this, I just grab the outside. This is your rear washer fluid reservoir. It's in the door. Whoops. You have rear defrost lines, they work. Your center tail light. This roll bar here, which is factory. So if you did take the top off and you did remove the rear door, you would have this cool roll bar protecting the rear anyway, so that's nice. Rear carpeted area back here. Again, just absolutely excellent shape. Do get a light back here, which is very, very convenient at night. It's very nice to have that. Um, see the panels, the rear of the seat, everything is in really good shape. 
You can pop the carpet off to show you what the metal looks like underneath. And you're going to be amazed at how clean it is. Just wonderful. Um, and then even the, the seals and the rubbers and everything. and Just, just real nice. Oh, this little sensor, the little boot's got a tear in it. Toe, or not a toe hook, but a toe loop. You could just mount a trailer hitch there too if you wanted. I imagine this would actually be pretty good at towing. Um, in the UK, their four tracks, which is this, they use to tow for horses and livestock and stuff all the time. So. Uh, one part I don't like about this is how you have to get to the seat to fold forward. So normally there'd be something back here that you'd grab and you'd think these. All this does is release the rear bottom hooks but that you need it to fold in on itself. So you have to come back here. And there isn't even one over there, it's just right here. To release it. Now you can pull these. And then push it forward. And then you have the little rubber stoppies down here. And that this, you loop down and you hook it underneath the driver's seat to prevent it from going back under acceleration. But now you get a decent amount of space. Or if you don't want the back seat at all, just take it out. It's just held in with some bolts. No big deal. But yeah. And you can see the bottom under here and the latches and everything. There's tie downs too. Just an excellent, excellent condition vehicle. And it's a turbo diesel, manual transmission, small thing. Size-wise competitive with the Bronco 2 or the Samurai. I think it's probably in between those two sizes. Um, gonna take it for a ride, but while we're out here, I'll just do the startup right now. I gotta pop the hood anyway. the hood first and again if there's any doubts as to the mileage of this vehicle and you're still not convinced hopefully the engine will so this is a DL62 engine from Daihatsu it's an inline 4 2.8 liter turbo diesel and intercooled as the <laughs> rear spare tire tells you it's for outdoor freaks and it's also intercooled Giant battery, this is factory. As you can see, the battery tray itself is meant for that size. Assuming to give you lots of juice to start your Daihatsu rudder in the winter. But this one, I doubt ever saw any sort of winter or cold stuff at all, because there's no rust, with the exception of this. This is the most rust you'll ever see on this vehicle. Surface rust for the little, after you pop the hood and you stick your hand under here and you lift it to lift the hood. That's it. And even then, it's just light surface stuff. Um, yeah, it's just really clean, beautifully maintained. And right here, the stamp, chassis number, or chassis number, sorry, F78G-000041. Two seven six five or 2.8 liter color. Code 168, trim FC, or is that a G? FC 12, powered by a DL62. And just bent the plug away. Come back. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's very, very clean under here. And we'll start it. Why not? And then, as I said, I've got three of these original Daihatsu keys. They all work. You can see from the keyware. There isn't any. And as far as starting this, see the glow plug indicator down here? Wait for it to go out. And you start it. And it's warm here in Florida, so not something I need to worry about. And it's not a choke, but it's like a throttle control down here. So if it was cold, 
you twist it, but all it does is if you notice, <laughs> all this knob does is just grab the actual throttle pedal itself and pull it, which is why this moves when you twist this. Rattly, rumbly diesel. Old school diesel. In 93. Walk around with the engine running. There's the exhaust pipe. And it will kick out some smoke if you floor it, as older diesels always do. But yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna get prepared and then we'll actually go for a drive. All right. Take this mint condition 1993 Daihatsu Rugger out. And it's fairly warm. So I'm gonna use the AC. Also low on fuel, but it'll be fine. I'll get some later. See, unfortunately, there's really not going to be much to talk about with this as it's a new Dodge Rugger from 1993. And the things that make it unique aren't immediately apparent. Um, and it drives like you would expect a car or truck to. People tend not to notice it too much because it blends in more. Um, the most attention that you'll get is people hearing it start in parking lots. <clears throat> but as you can see, it's it's a car. Use the four-wheel drive system up uh, up north in Crystal River on sandy, loose gravel, dirt, ruddy sort of trails. Nothing muddy. I didn't want to get a bunch of mud all over everything. And as I had mentioned, the uh, undercarriage is absolutely spotless. There'll be a link in the description to a gallery showing it. This makes a great daily driver. Probably not if you had a big family. A kid, two kids. That should be good. But we'll take it to the highway. seat down so it doesn't block the other camera <clears throat> and this is fairly small nice blinker um, 
and this road right here is relatively thin. Enough to make this woman be upset. Anyway, because it's relatively thin, you can drive down to thin sort of areas with confidence and then you can see the little stick down there. But yeah, absolutely no issues. I mean, it's, it's a new truck. structured uh, the turbo kicks on between around 2500 rpm is where the majority of the power goes or is shows up I guess you still get a bunch of low-end torque but as far as the like I had a PZ 70 Land Cruiser and it just kind of wheezed as you got up there like it got plenty of Plenty of speed, it was plenty fast. It just it didn't have the burst. You really need a turbo to give that a little bit. Anyway. Temperature's good. speed we're obviously not idling now but idle speed is about 700 rpm and another advantage of it being so small but having a fat turbo diesel power band is that you can just kind of snake through little trails and things Again, it's not much wider than a U.S. market Samurai. It is, but not much. And it's so much more of a car that you can use.
barely made it. Didn't like going into third gear right there. But yeah, I mean, it's not a performance vehicle, but it's pretty light on its feet. I guess that's just owing to its size. I don't know what the weight is, but it doesn't get blown around on the interstate either.
the rumble through the transmission lever. It's a nice, reassuring rumble. And this is the primary driving I do. Hardly ever take it on the highway. I just have. And I wanted to demonstrate that it was compatible with that. Normally, stuff like this. 55 is about the top speed I'll hit in any given day. Usually around 30 to 40 miles per hour. Not so much stop and go traffic either, but. Like I said, average about 22 miles to the gallon, which is pretty good. speed after about 3,000 RPM too, or you run out of getting any more power so you might as well shift, you're just making a bunch of noise. rudder that we had but that was just a little too rough it was a little too it looked it looked better than this one as all older stuff does but it was too rough couldn't do highway speeds that one was 55 miles per hour that's what you got solid axles leaf springs not as nice a little more miles on it but not much but yeah this one it's a new car difficulty I'm not fighting it shifts are notchy it kind of feels like a tractor but it feels like a, a good tractor apparently one of the complaints about this generation rugger the f75 or f78 sorry was it was unrefined and you didn't have four doors so Daihatsu neglected to replace it at the end of this one's run which is fine. And then uh, Daihatsu is fully owned by Toyota. I think it was in the 90s, the late 90s. At the time this was made and into the, the 80s, they had a very good working relationship with them. First generation Ruggers were sold as the Toyota Blizzard. And instead of having the, um, you can see that, agile nature. <laughs> um, anyway, first generation Ruggers were sold as Toyota Blizzards. They were built by Daihatsu, except they were equipped with the 2.4 liter L engine. Turbo, TL, I think, LT, whatever they called it. That's really common in uh, early Land Cruiser Prados and Hiluxes and Hilux Surfs and the stuff of that like a high aces too it's in the in those but that was only for the first generation there was no toyota blizzard for the or sorry right okay there was a very early daihatsu but i think it was just called the taft and it was like a little jeep sort of thing then i there was the rugger i don't know if they're the same or not either way there was a toyota one there isn't anymore or there wasn't anymore when this one came out but the mirrors here these are toyota parts say toyota and everything is stamped on them i haven't seen that anywhere else in the truck but it wouldn't surprise me but i do know that this one the engine is all daihatsu the running gear and everything is daihatsu because they had been making it since the early 80s in the original rugger because this is pretty much that one they just changed the suspension and flared out the wheel arches and did some stuff like that but it's great. If 
few like uh, Ford Rangers and things and like small sort of pickups. This one owns, it's not a pickup truck. There's a diesel, it's small, it's clean and new. Still smells in there too. And with this line in, you get the original stereo sound and it is just truly stereo, it's just two speakers. They sound pretty decent. If I were to keep this, I'd probably upgrade the stereo a little bit. At least put in a sub. This is a small one, something to add low in. kilometers to this. It's awesome. And you'll probably never ever see, people say this stuff all the time, but I'm never going to see another one like this. Never going to see another rugger with 20, 20,000 when I got it, kilometers on it, which is <laughs> like something absurd, like 13,000 miles total. Never again, but I'm glad I got to experience this one. And the next owner too, whoever that is, they'll have it. These tires, they're slightly upsized, but there isn't any clearance issues, turning lock to lock or suspension bouncing or any of that sort of stuff, so they're fine.
hopefully this gives you an idea of what one of these is like, or specifically this one. They're nice, very old school, wrapped in a nice 90s sort of feel. This is very 90s in here. 80s trying to be 90s. I really appreciate that. There you go.